on more than one occasion. Isa al-Masih has said to his disciples, this is something that's going to happen in accordance to the scriptures. Even after his resurrection, on one occasion, he spoke to them about what the scriptures said. And opening the Torah and the Zabur and the Limbiat, the prophets, he expounded to them everything concerning him from the scriptures and their eyes were open and they understood. Let us put aside the whole New Testament for a moment and let's go as Isa al-Masih has done with the disciples that he spoke to and expound from the scriptures, from the Torah and other passages, this idea of the death, the necessary death for a ransoming of mankind because we are in the clutches of sin. Let's begin with the fall of Adam and Eve into sin. Satan tempted him to take that which was not rightfully his, which was only God's. And so he fell into sin. But in the warning that Allah had given Adam prior to his sin, he said to him, and this is what's written in the Torah, do not touch of the fruit of this tree, for in the day that you will eat it, you will die. What is interesting is that on that day, Adam did not immediately die. Something happened that redeemed him from this very death without it causing the word of Allah to be brought to naught. To cover the nakedness of Adam and Eve and their sin and their shame, a sacrifice was made that day and the Lord God took the skin of the sacrifice and made it into clothing to cover their sin and shame. This is what we learn from the Torah. So every prophet that came, Allah saw to it that they would understand this principle of sacrifice for ransoming. In the instance of uh, Nabi Ibrahim, peace be upon him, when he was told to offer his son on the altar, it says in Surah Al-Safat, that Allah ransomed him with a momentous sacrifice. Ransom and sacrifice go hand in hand. You cannot have ransom without sacrifice. We see the same idea of sacrifice in the Akika prayers that are still done today for uh, any newborn child. In the dua prayed before the Akika sacrifice, the concept of ransom comes out very clearly. The dua says, Oh Allah, this Akika is for my child. May its blood be in exchange for his blood, its flesh in exchange for his flesh, its bones in exchange for his bones, its skin in exchange for his skin. Oh Allah, save my child from the fire of hell. In the name of Allah, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. One of the first things God revealed to Moses was the seriousness of their sin and the means that God provided for forgiveness. He did this by instituting the sacrificial system. Anyone committing an act of disobedience or sin was to give an animal sacrifice to obtain forgiveness. These sacrifices described in the Torah were intended to serve as a sign pointing to a final and perfect sacrifice that God would himself provide at some future date. That final and perfect future sacrifice became one of the central themes of the different holy books. All the different passages describing God's future sacrifice centered around a coming person that God promised to send. And that person is called Al-Masih, the Messiah the anointed one, the chosen one. This coming Messiah would be identified by the many signs that would accompany him. So there would be no mistake in recognizing who he is. Many details of the Messiah's birth, his location, his life, his mission, all of these were prophesied long beforehand in the Torah and in the Imbiya, the prophetic writings. Allow me to share with you 
a significant testimony from the Imbia, from the prophets. In Isaiah chapter 53, speaking of the one who was to come, the one that Allah said to Adam, peace be upon him, and, uh, and, and to Ibrahim and others that would be coming to crush the serpent's head. He's, he's speaking about that one who's to come, and here's what he says. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. And this is significant now, listen. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. Again, this is significant, my friend, for remember the khutbah of Butros, Peter, the disciple of Isa al-Masih, who stood and said to the crowd, you know these facts about Isa al-Masih. And this was done according to the purpose and foreknowledge of Allah. On what authority could Butros say such a thing? He said it because 750 years before the birth of Isa al-Masih, it is written, yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life a guilt offering, the Lord makes his life a guilt offering. The Lord makes his life the one to be put in the mizan for my sin and your sin. All of the prophets gave this testimony. And they said this is the expression not just of the will of Allah, but of his mercy and of his love. To say, no, 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 no. This is not what I need. I need only to do good works. It is as if you are saying, I don't need this kind of love. I don't want God to love me this way. Who are we to tell Allah how he should ransom us? Ibrahim didn't do this. As a Muslim, as one submitted to Allah, he accepted the deed of Allah who said, we have ransomed him with a momentous sacrifice. So we must to accept the deed of Allah. He has loved us and put in the mizan the life of Isa al-Masih as a redemption. For he was the one born as the posterity of the woman without a human father, allowed by God to come and give him the authority to lay down his life and to take it up again and fulfills this prophecy and many others. Indeed, even as the ushering of his ministry came upon mankind, one last prophet of the Old Testament, at the close of the Old Testament, and ushering the new era of the Injil, Yahya, John the Baptist, stood up before the crowd and the very first words of testimony concerning Isa al-Masih th was this, Behold, look, the Lamb of Allah, which takes away the sin of the world. He was indeed to be put to death for a purpose and to see the light of life, resurrection and victory over shaitan in our lives. Because of him, I have something in the mizan that outweighs all of the evilest and weightiest of sins. Someone may say, oh, but I am not a sinner like others. Let me ask you, how many sins did it take for Adam to experience the penalty of death? One. How many times do you have to be bit by a cobra before you're poisoned? How many bullets from a gun does it take to pierce my heart before I die? All, all that is sufficient is one. Sin brings death. The wages of sin, the Injil tells us, is death. We deserve death. The only thing we can put on the mizan is not our good deeds, but our life. But in God's mercy, He allowed a Savior to come. Pure, sinless, what a ram could not do was given. They crucified him, thinking they were doing something right. But it was all according to the purpose and foreknowledge of Allah. He's al-Masih. Huwa al khalas And I say to you, he is the sacrifice, he is the savior, that it is for our good, for our salvation, so that fil 
on the day of judgment. If we do not have him as our khalas, then it is khalas, so to speak. If he is not our deliverer, then we are finished. For Allah has not devised anything else to be put on the mizan except that sacrifice, the ransom with the sacrifice. God bless you and may you receive that word and through that word believe and come to the full forgiveness and reconciliation that you cannot merit, that I cannot merit, but that God gives us freely because on the mizan, he has given his life as a sacrifice. And we are ransomed with a momentous sacrifice. Let us not despise it. Let us believe it. Let us accept humbly the love and the grace of Allah that is being demonstrated to us by his son Masih and his sacrifice. So in his name, accept the forgiveness of Allah.